as someone born and raised in Northern Virginia, the Pentagon is something I've always seen. It's always been there. But for those who were there 20 years ago to this day, it's not just a landmark. It's a deep scar that continues to heal 20 years later. On September 11, 2001, Lisa Daniels was starting her first day of work back at the Pentagon when her babysitter called off sick with the flu. At 8 o'clock, 8.30 that morning, it felt like, like the worst thing that could happen. You know, I'm missing my first day of work. Around that same time, American Airlines Flight 77 en route to Los Angeles took off from Ronald Reagan Airport just minutes away from the Department of Defense's headquarters. And then by 9, 9.15, totally different situation. Everything had changed. You just could not imagine a building like that being um, demolished on one side. Um, there was a lot of acrid smoke in the air from the jet fuel. That's that was the thing that hung on with me for years, um, came back to haunt me years later. I had known the planes had hit the, the, the World Trade Center. And I was still trying to get my head wrapped around that. And the idea that it was a terrorist attack really hadn't sunk in on me yet. But I'm also, because I was a flyer in the Air Force, I also knew no pilot would ever fly into a building that big. It wasn't an accident. I knew it wasn't an accident. Jeffrey Cohen is a colonel in the Air Force. He's retired now, but on that fateful day, he was in the Pentagon when Flight 77 crashed into the building. I felt the building shake and I felt the bang. And I, when I, 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 when I looked around, people started leaving the building. It's like, I guess I'll be leaving. And I came out of the building. I think I was in corridor three at the time. And I looked over my right shoulder and I saw all the smoke pouring out of the building. And someone said to me, a jet just flew into the building. Soon after the crash, first responders were there on the scene battling the blaze and rescuing civilians. The Fort Myer Fire Department actually had a station there where they had a, a crash truck that was positioned there specifically to be on standby for helicopter landings and takeoffs. And um, one of the first things I noticed was their fire truck sitting out there completely burned up. That's Jeff Mayer, an Arlington County firefighter for 29 years and one of the first responders to the attack on the Pentagon. We get hearing reports that there might be another plane coming. Uh, there were uh, two or three times where they actually pulled us back away from the firefighting operation because we thought maybe another plane was coming. For those of us living through it, we had no idea about what was next. We all thought something was next. We couldn't imagine that it was over, but we couldn't imagine what was next. And so it was that insecurity that I think um, that I won't forget. The initial crews were there on the scene for about 12 hours before a shift schedule was put in place. It would take several days to put out the fire. A lot of, a lot of people spent many, many hours that day sitting in front of their televisions watching kind of the horror of this thing unfolding. And those of us who were in the middle of dealing with it, um, I think we're kind of spared some of that trauma in a way. Although, you know, certainly some of my colleagues uh, saw some really horrible things. It, it never goes away. It always kind of haunts you. You know, it, it's like before the Pentagon was just a big office building to me, you know, and now when you go by, it's like it's just a bad memory. I actually try not to forget because I, you know, I don't ever want to be complacent. hundred and twenty five people on the ground lost their lives at the Pentagon on September 11 59 others on the plane those I spoke to say many many lives were spared that day because of the part of the building where the plane hit was under construction at the time 